Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and in fact we begin a, a month of celebration, Jubilee for the Earth. So as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let's call to mind our sins, and particularly this time, the way in which we have been less than concerned about the Earth. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth, earth peace to people of good goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that the wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in, in his iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence, giving thanks let us hail him with a song of praise. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, come, let us bow and bend low, 
Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God, and we, the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, oh that today, today you would listen, listen to his voice, voice. Harden, harden not your, your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meriba, as at that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebearers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, oh that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia. 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 My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. This month, as I suggested at the beginning of Mass, from the 1st of September to the 4th of October, Christians around the world are called to celebrate a jubilee for the earth. The idea of jubilee comes from Leviticus 25.10. I quote, And you shall consecrate the 50th year, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. You shall return, every one of you, to your property, and every one of you to your family. In the original Hebrew, we're told it refers to the ram's horn blown every 50 years to mark a season of redemption and restoration, a leveling up of a situation where in ancient Israel, inequalities and injustice had piled up in the course of daily life 
over those 50 years. Debts would be forgiven, and even the land would be given the opportunity to rest and renew itself. Now, that, of course, was the theory. Many biblical scholars even wonder whether it was ever put into practice. Now, this year, Christians everywhere, across our many different traditions, are called to apply the principle of jubilee to the earth, to reconsider how we use, and more often not abuse, the earth, to take steps to change our ways, to find ways of living more sustainably, and to waste less of the earth's resources. Our readings this Sunday, though they do not directly address this, call us to accountability for our behavior, for the behavior of others. The prophet Ezekiel is nothing less than blunt about it. God holds you responsible for holding the wicked accountable. He proclaims that God has made him a watchman or a sentry, depending on the translation you use. In short, a kind of guard over the people whose task is to engage with the house of Israel. He is called to speak out. Failure to do so will make him responsible for the harm that will follow. Silence means consent. Consent implies approval of whatever harm is done. Our not calling others and ourselves to account for the harms we see in the world, be that the misuse of power, the exploitation of the poor, unjust laws, or the destruction of the earth, our common home, means that we consent to, and I'd go further and say approve of such evils. We cannot be silent. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus offers us a process by which we speak up and speak out. First, communicate your concerns to the one doing harm. Second, do this with a few other people, members of the church, as we heard in, in the readings. If this fails, report the offender to the community. Echoing Paul's reminder in Romans that the essential that the essence of all law and morality is the command to love. Note how it works. Foremost, it's rooted in respect for the offender and in the belief that rather than being fundamentally evil, that person is misguided, potentially open to conversion that could lead to a change in their life. Now, only when the person shows no sign of change does one bring in the wider community that one or two people or the wider community. If at that point they still refuse to change, Jesus says they should be treated like tax collectors and Gentiles. Now here's a paradox if you think about it. Does it mean as most people would have us think and as most people probably understood in Jesus' time, ostracism, exclusion from the community, even perhaps some kind of punishment or does it mean, if we look at his own practice, forgiveness and inclusion? Now, I think it can mean both. Those who refuse to change are excluded because in refusing to listen to pleas for conversion, they exclude themselves from the community. But just as repentant tax collectors and Gentiles open to his word were included in Jesus' community, there is always the possibility with conversion of reincorporation. Now, putting it on an ecological level, I wonder how many of you are thinking how this present coronavirus might be an expression of this later dynamic. Think about it. For decades, we have lived on borrowed time gleefully and unthinkingly exploiting the earth, imagining that we are masters of the world, immune from the implications of our misuse of the environment. And now we find ourselves literally locked down all over our planet, threatened by natural forces we cannot control, vulnerable to a force of nature that reduces our movement, limits our capacity to do the things we've done almost without thinking, I wonder if I'm alone 
in thinking that the earth is currently treating us like collective tax collectors and Gentiles. Think about it. Not easy. Think about it. The challenge as I see it is to learn from this. Not simply to find an interim cure for our condition, even though that's important. The history of viruses teaches us that they mutate and adapt. If we really want to be freed of the threat of natural diseases, we must rethink how we live on our planet. In short, we need, even as we work to find a cure for COVID-19, to learn to adapt to living with the Earth in tune with nature. I think we must change our language, at very least, as a beginning. From the idea of mastery over nature to stewardship with nature. From living on the Earth, but obviously implicitly not really part of the Earth, to living with the Earth. Can we do it? To borrow from a former president of the United States whose absence many of us feel all too acutely in present times, yes, we can. We can and must, as Ezekiel reminds us, call out and demand from those who hold power in government, business, and all over the place, new practices to clean up the earth. That's important. But beyond that, we must educate ourselves and continually encourage one another to live more ecologically sustainable lives. May the challenge of these readings and the challenge of our present times incite us to greater concern for the earth. Amen. Let us now, as a community of communities spread across the world, profess the faith we all share by saying together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the dead in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have to I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and life in the world to come. Amen. Having professed the faith we all share, let us share in our petitions this day. We pray for a greater sense of responsibility for our earth, that we may find the voice to call our leaders to work for ecological justice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the whole church will be a force for the renewal of the earth, in proclamation and practice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that each of us will do our bit to renew the earth 
and to hold each other accountable. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Perhaps spend a few moments for your own personal prayer. Loving God, our Creator, receive the prayers we make this day. Answer them according to your will. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By this mingling of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of him who shared our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came to, in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered us covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. 
He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that, bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Booty, our Archbishop, Duncan, his auxiliary, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior commanded, formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mass has ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. And thanks be to God.